just wanted to do my favorite uh, movies of 2011. Uh, but uh, here's a, a pickup I just got today on Blu ray uh, Diary of the Dead, George Romero. That was an awesome five bucks. Can't go wrong for five bucks. I bought it. I already have it on DVD, so maybe one day that might be given away. But uh, that that's an awesome movie. It's like uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, and then turn this off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, then probably not watching this anyway. Uh, they actually filmed their attack of the zombies. It's made to look like it's real. It's actually happening. Some dude's filming it, and they're just yeah. They were he was originally filming, and there was no nothing happening, and then the zombies start attacking, and pure chaos breaks out, and he's still filming the whole way. It's from the point of view of the guy filming it, so pretty good. Anytime you got George Romero doing a zombie movie, you're never going to lose. <laughs> the king of the zombies, George A. Romero. There you go. And now I'll get to my five favorites of uh, 2011. Number five, Super 8. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't, can't remember the director, but I think uh, Spielberg produced it. And you can see the Spielberg touch in this movie for sure. Uh, it's about a uh, group of kids that are filming a horror movie and the real horror breaks out. <laughs> when the military, the, the train crashes and it's the military or something and Super 8 is uh, kind of like a Goonies type thing because the, the, the kids in it, and, but it turns out to be more horror than you think. Like, I didn't think that it was like that, but it's like alien horror at the end. But anyway, yeah, that would be my fifth one of the year. Number four, Contagion. Yeah, Outbreak type movie, uh, a little more horrific than Outbreak though. Uh, it's more scenes of uh, craziness and uh, whatever the hell they got, I can't remember what it was, but yeah. There was some, uh, so number three, the, uh, this one I just saw on, on Saturday. And I was talking about the releases, movies being released. Uh, this is definitely not released on uh, DVD or Blu-ray because it just came out, like I think a month ago, so it's still in the theater. Uh, the Darkest Hour. Yeah, that shocked me. I was expecting a CGI fest because from the trailer it looked like a lot of CGI and pretty much that was when the attacks happened but it was actually pretty well done it, and it was in 3D the 3D wasn't all too good uh, sometimes it was when uh, at the end is when it got pretty good for the 3D but uh, I actually like this movie the Darkest Hour. Wasn't too bad. It was all set in uh, Russia, Moscow. And pretty damn good. I I was surprised I, that I liked it. I, but, uh, yeah. But uh, another one, Aliens Taken Over. <laughs> well, Super 8 wasn't about aliens taking over an alien type deal in it, but uh, Darkest Hour was an alien takeover. 
Number two is the was the prequel to the thing. Yeah, surprise. I was expecting going into that movie just negative thoughts. I was gonna go watch it, give it a chance, and of course take it down like it should have been. But they held up. Once I heard though that it was a prequel, like you pretty much like the remake, original remake thing of it, that just took me right off. And once they switched it to saying it was a prequel. almost changed my mind it, it it turned out to be pretty it was it was good it was uh the scenery shots were amazing but so was from the original uh and stuff like that uh as i said before when i talked about this movie when uh, i saw it it was it, it was like a cross from the 1951 version and the 1982 version because uh, there's been two versions of the thing not just one from 1982 that's the best by far the best of the three John Carpenter's version but there has been three versions of this movie uh, I don't see anybody talking about the 1951 version of it uh, when when this one came out which kind of shocked me because Carpenter, that's the reason why he did the thing. Because he was a huge fan of the 1951 version. That's the reason, the only reason we're seeing that movie from 1982. He, if that, the thing never came out in 1951, we wouldn't be seeing the one in 1982 from John Carpenter because that's, as he's said many times one of his favorite uh, movies ever and the reason for the remake he did in 1982 so I'm surprised that no one was talking about that 1951 version which was pretty damn good <laughs> it's a classic for fuck's sakes but uh, anyway I'm going off on that one again and number one and it did come out in 2011 at the start I think it was January or February. I I was surprised that it was because it feels like it's been out for ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is uh, boom. Hear the music going. This did come out in 2011. It feels like it's been out way longer than that. But it was. I looked it up. It's 2011. Well, but with a shotgun, I didn't think, I thought it was 2010, but it feels like it's been out for so long. I just love this movie so much, that's why it did come out at the start of 2011. So, I just, everyone knows my love for this freaking movie and the, the original trailer that was from the Grindhouse. And, uh, yeah, there's my top movies of 2011. And shit, this turned out to be a pretty long video, so time to edit. <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> think this is way too long. I'm gonna be editing, editing. But there's my top five, uh, number five for top five movies for 2011. Not releases, top five movies. Releases includes DVD releases is what I'm talking about. These are brand new movies that came out in 2001. Number 5 is Super 8. Number 4, Contagion. Number 3, The Darkest Hour. Number 2, The Prequel to the Thing. And number 1, Bubble with a Shotgun. Rock y'all later. It's over! Time to get shit-faced!